All right, so I'm going to apologize in advance for like the 60 mile an hour wind gusts we have today, but it's like 60 mile an hour wind advisory, and it's the uh, day before Thanksgiving, and it's extremely cold out now. It was 60 degrees, now it's like 40. All right, so we're going to do the brake control module on this thing. As you saw in one of the previous videos, we have an error code. So, just like the BMW, you watched that video. This is fairly, this is the unit, and we need to remove it. So, this thing is in the way, your windshield washer reservoir. So the first thing you do is come down here and get these little push pin guys out of the way. You're probably going to need two people for this, because you're going to have to pop these out. Someone's going to have to hold this out of the way, so somebody else can go in here and unbolt these things. I'll show you from underneath where they are. There's three of them. Alright, so from under here, if you can even see... Ugh. Reservoir has got two 11 millimeters on this side. I don't know how well you can even see up in there. But there's two of them there, and then there's one real big pain in the ass one that is a mother to get to. That's up there. Those are those 11, I believe, millimeter. Yeah, and we had this. And really long extensions. I actually use these three and then the steel one that was this big on there. And with that out of the way, you're able to move maneuver this. Lift up your fuse box. And there's four T20s, one, two, three, four at each corner. You're gonna have to get your fuses out of the way too. So you just unclip it, that pops up, and I got this kind of propped up with a screwdriver out of the way so you can get your hands in here so you T20 those off. But once this box comes off, be able to put the new one on, scan for codes, and then the meat of the video is going to be us showing you how to reinitialize the new module. So that way the car will recognize it, you can get rid of your codes, and you'll have ABS traction and all your goodies again. Alright, so I'm going to tell you right now, those two on the top are fairly easy to get to, these two on the bottom are a royal pain in the ass. There's no room even if you get this thing out of your way. So we're going to try to get a better angle at it first things first we want to unplug this you go down here at the bottom where this thing was squeeze lift and then when that's up you can pull this off boom done so that'll be kind of out of the way for now and now we're going to, have to figure out how to get this damn thing out of the way so we can get a better angle at it these lines may have a little bit of give but not much and I've got a shitload of different tools, T20 on a socket, too big, T20 with this little socket, too big. Trying T20 on this thin guy, kind of gets in there, but that's supposed to be for like an impact driver or something, so I don't know. We're, we're figuring it out, I'll let you know which technique works best on here. Alright boys, so we got the four bolts out, and the two on the top are fairly easy, right? So using a uh, assortment of long thingies with our T20, uh, and a, qu a quarter of an inch, we'll get a socket around there. They're barely tight, so you just really need to bust it loose. The ones on the bottom are the pain in the ass. So this thing out of the way, on this, well we'll start with this size first since I'm over here. So you can kind of see where the bolt was from here. You got to peek through here. And then down here is where that bolt was. So that's where you're going to get your view. And I took the T20, put it in a one quarter inch drive, and then put it on this itty quarter inch socket. And then you can get it through there and start your loosening. You just pick, once you bust it loose, you can thread it out the rest of the way by hand using just this. You won't need the ratchet. The one on this side, You'll be able to peek through from up above, kind of right here. And you can see right there is where it was. So that's where you'll get your view. And on that one, I used the longer one quarter inch. And then to put that on the T20, went through that way. And then I was able to ratchet it pink, bust it loose. And then now that those are off, in order to get this thing off, uh, it's just like the BMWs where there's little rods on this side and little round cylinder type things that go over them on this side So you just pull it straight off and I'll show you what that looks like yeah. 
coming loose. It's coming loose. She's got to be fucking finagle it. This thing's been on here for 70,000 miles. Without damaging anything. Won't damage it. It's just there's rubber round things and then the metal things. So you just got to kind of finagle it a little back and forth and pull gently while you're doing it. And then as you can see, it'll come off. Got it. So you just gently remove it. And that's it. This right here is the control module. Well, what he's aiming at is uh, oh. the, the valve body, essentially. But over in here, we have a dead spider and all the other deals. So this is where the electrical connection goes in. And then these are the little solenoids and things activating uh, the insides of the pump, etc., etc. So now we got that off. Take the new one inside, put it on, and then we should be road ready. Okay, so that's our inside part. Disassembled. Boom. And make sure that they are the same. They are. And see you back outside. All right, so putting her back on, boys, is going to be much easier than taking it out. Just put them in by hand, and then with your ratchet, just a little till it gets tight. Don't go crazy, because remember those two on the bottom are a pain in the ass to get to if you ever have to take this off again. So now, boom, we'll just put this on. Final force of the torque. And then uh, <clears throat> get our freaking jug back where it goes. Put that down, put the catch can back, and then uh, we'll be able to get the scanner, and then we'll reinitialize, and then hopefully this will be a success. Okay, so that's all nice and reassembled. Got the fuse box back down. Our catch cans where it goes. This is back in place. The three bolts, the two, and then the other one. Three total. Kind of a pain in the ass. Ten or uh, eleven millimeter. And then we got our uh, fender lining here pushed back together. I guess it normally comes with these things, but we used uh, some of those little pushy deals. To replace those, that works better. Okay, so now all we got to do is get the Autel Maxi check out and reinitialize. We're going to clear the codes and then we're going to go for a drive and do whatever it says in order to reinitialize that module to this vehicle. So I've already gotten to the ABS part, so we're going to read codes and we are going to have the ABS module failure PO20 or whatever. Okay, well, so system pass, no fault calls detected. Uh, okay, all right, well, easy enough then. Weird. Okay. So the next thing we need to do then is we'll have to do the uh, initializing because this does need to be initialized. So I'll get you over there in a sec. Okay, so now that we've started the car, we do have the C2202 original VIN mismatch missing. And that means that we have a different ABS module. So it's got a different VIN than what the car does. So now we will go ahead and initialize this. Okay, so under miscellaneous function in the ABS system, we need ABS initialization, but there's also bleed brakes, initialize ESP sensor. We don't need to bleed the brakes because we didn't open it up, so let's just go ABS initialization. Routine is used to initialize the ABS ECU after either ECU or related component replaced. Okay. You'll probably have brakes. Just pump the brakes here in a second. Please verify the vehicle is stationary on level ground and the wheel straight and the pedal released. So that's not the way it is. Back it up and do all that. Okay, so make sure the wheels are straight. What's that fucking beeping? Your brake light keeps blinking and breaking. It wasn't doing that where it stayed solid. Now it's blinking. Well, give it a minute. Okay, ESP sensor initialization completed. Please continue to finish initialization of the ABS. Okay. Now it stopped blinking. Now it went out. Okay, well, it's doing something, so stand by. Okay, everything's gone. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on there, Chief. Relax, it's not doing the same. Okay, cycle ignition and then press OK. So cycle your ignition. Turn the ignition off. I'll turn it back on. Started. 
Uh, just says cycle it, so turn it on. We'll try just on. In order to complete the drive test, the engine must be running at first, and then the vehicle has to be driven between 3 and 15 miles per hour with a turn that is at least 90 degrees wide. Okay, start the car. Alright, so we'll back her out in the street. We'll do that. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to hit OK and then do that or hit OK after it, so we'll just hit OK after it's done. And then uh, me and the viewers will know. We'll just go straight down the street. You only got to go between, yeah, a right, a right hand turn at uh, 90 degrees or whatever. Motherfuckers, there's always people coming. Alright, 3 and 15 and then make a 90 degree turn. Yeah, so between 3 and 15 with a turn that is 90 degrees. So make sure you're going between 3 and 15 when you bust this mean right. <laughs> That's one way to do it. All right, I'll hit OK. EPS will continue to flash until the drive test is complete. If the EPS light is on solid and the drive test failed, Due to a faulty component, check for DTCs. Is the light on? Nothing's on. Just my fucking tire pressure light. Well, then I think we're good. acted like I was supposed to shut the engine off or something, but it didn't say to do that, so that was kind of weird. Just shut off starting again? We'll put it in park, I guess. Let me wait until it's done communicating before you shut it off again. Because it's doing something. Yeah, it says hit the brakes even if the vehicle has a manual transmission. So I'm guessing that means hold the brakes. I just took them off now. Well, there is a period. Okay, so just hit the brakes. Just tap them. Turn the steering wheel full left. Full right, full left, back to center. Full left, full right. Full, full left. Now back to center. I guess that's center. Yeah, it looks pretty center. Okay, so let's hit OK. Brake pedal needs to be pressed before proceeding to the next step. Okay. Drive the vehicle between 3 and 15 miles an hour. Make at least one turn that is at 90 degrees wide. Continue straight 50 feet after the turn and then come to a complete stop. I'm guessing after you do that, whatever that beeping is should stop. That's going to be a tight turn. Three to, three to 15, 90 degrees. Go. Now continue 50 feet. 50 feet. 50 feet. Keep going. At least 50 feet. Well, fuck how long you think 50 feet is. Now pull in here. This ain't going to work. Now come to a complete stop. Okay, if it did not pass, you're gonna have to repeat this process. So do you're gonna have to do it again. I guess you're gonna have to just come to a complete stop in the middle of the fucking street. The only thing on now is the ESB BAS. Well, you have to drive between three and fifteen, make a right turn, or it says a wide turn. It doesn't matter if it's left or right, I guess, but then you have to continue straight fifty feet and then come to a stop. So I gotta go left and right, left and right shoot again? No, just this part. Uh, well, here's a left turn, I think. Just bust a mean, mean left. One, two, three, go. 
All right. 50 feet and then shut it off. Wasn't really 50 feet, I don't think, but all right. I don't know where you go 50 feet. 50 feet is only Okay, five, okay, 10, whatever. It says, clearing rolls information. Engine must not be running. Turn off engine and turn ignition to run position. Alright, so it's clearing rolls bite successfully completed. Whatever that means. Establishing vehicle communications. ABS initialization successfully completed. Establishing vehicle communications. Okay, so I guess it's done. Take turn the key off and then start it again, I guess. We need to find out what this fucking wheel fucking tire pressure sensor is shit is. Well we can get that back when we get it back in the driveway. All right, start it. We got no lights. Tire burn. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that's how you successfully reinitialize your new module, ABS module, on your Dodge Challenger after you go through uh, that whole rigmarole. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped. Hopefully, uh, you can save yourself some money instead of at the dealership. Just go buy a used one, like we did. And then uh, you have to cough up the money for this guy, which is uh, whatever the hell I paid for it. I think it was like 200 bucks, damn near. But, uh, well, you'll have it for everything else, so you don't want to give it to the dealership and you want to have something to show for it after you're done get one of these yep so his abs brakes everything seemed to work now all those lights are gone the trifecta is gone so that's it thanks for watching peace